Pray for me, please. Um, we're just going to go right into it. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit has a lot. And um, I asked for your prayer, and, and I don't know if many of you follow us on oatchurch.com. However, all of our midweek services is online in our, in our home website, because, of course, it's what we're going through right now. And we encourage you all to go check out the website. Also on there, you can also give electronically and securely. And we encourage you to do so. Listen, beloved church family, I stand before God in fear. And I will never steal worship or glory from Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Never. You can rebuke me. You can. I, I, I'm, I'm a brother of the Lord. I'm a worshiper of Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit lives in me just like he lives in you. You have Jesus Christ as Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit lives in you. Amen. 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 And I say this to you because, yes, Glory to God, you made it. Hallelujah, say with me, I made it. Hallelujah, God knows what you went through this morning to get here, amen? Whether it was a kid not acting right, or that memory foam a little too comfortable. Ain't, ain't that amazing that the bed is so comfortable on a Sunday morning? Come on, am I preaching to somebody right now? Right? It's like my pillow's never felt so good. Right? But on a Sunday morning, it's like, oh, let's buy one in. It's Chris, like, who the pastor? What is wrong with you? Get up and go brush your teeth. Get the Bible on this. I don't need to brush my teeth. They can't smell my breath. But I encourage you. I encourage you. Please, if you're going through a season right now where the devil has his hand in your money, I'm going to encourage you. Hear me now. I didn't even know I was going to preach on this, but I got to preach on this. I have to be obedient. Give to God what is God. Amen. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm not, man, I'm not trying to touch your money. That's not your money. It's God's money. And then I'm just a child of God telling you, you want to see the breakthrough and increase in your life? God is a God of order. And right now, Holy Spirit's crying out. You see, there's some of you that got two inches higher in your chair. You just squeeze your butt cheeks so tight. I said, give God what you said. Why are you talking to me like that? Listen, get out of there. Get out of that. That's exactly what the devil wants you to do, to get offended when a child of God is telling you, give daddy what's daddy. Can I get an amen? amen? Give daddy what's daddy. Hallelujah. Are y'all ready? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Praise God. Heavenly Father, help me, O oh Lord. Oh, help me, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you that you are our help through the anointing and the power of your Holy Spirit. Father, as I plead your holy and precious blood, Lord Jesus Christ, you gave us the authority. Lord Jesus, you said so, that we will do greater things than you did when you walked this earth. And Father, we know you don't lie, and we know that the only way we can do this is in your mighty, holy name, Lord Jesus Christ. And Father God, right now, Holy Spirit, I ask you to display and manifest that anointing through your beloved church, Father God. Through all the churches in all this world that, walk, that worship you, Lord Jesus Christ, through your Holy Spirit, Father, bless them with a fresh anointing from heaven. And Father, in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ, Father God, we rebuke and bind up every foul, garbage, demonic thing right now. Father God, say with me, church, right now. Right now. And Father God, through the anointing of Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, we bless your life, your presence within us. And Father God, we thank you that you have released your anointing to the atmosphere. Father God, I can see generational curses being broken. Father, as you say through your word this week, Father God, the anointing, that whatever is dry home, you said, come alive. And I thank you, Father God, that the sick will be healed, Father God. And it's by your stripes, Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father God, for those that are struggling right now in the temple, in their body, Father that right now, Lord Jesus Christ, we bless them with a fresh anointing. Father, we lift up all your marriages. We lift up all the parents and single parents and the grandparents raising children, Father God. That your anointing, your life, Father God, shines through them. So that every soul can see you, Father God. Through the glory of your beloved, perfect son, Lord Jesus Christ. And the anointing of your Holy Spirit in every beloved child. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, Father. Rebuke me, Father, your our teacher. Joey Corentin is just your child, Father God, purchased by your blood, anointed through your Holy Spirit. Use me as a mouthpiece, Father. 
that I speak whatever you say and only what you say. Whether it's Pastor, Pastor John, myself, any elder, whoever is speaking, whoever is singing the song, that Holy Spirit, you speak through us and we don't touch the glory, Father. It's all for you, Lord Jesus Christ. And it's in your precious and holy and powerful and magnificent and good or good or name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you guys. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's get up and give everybody a hug. Look at everybody. Everybody's sorry until I get a I'm just kidding. Praise God. Do. Can you, can you say it with me, too? Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just tell you some picture real quick. Holy Spirit wants to plant some seeds. I need help. I know some of you are like, oh, no. I need help. Amen. So please pray during this service because there's just so much. Hallelujah. There's so much that we're going to go through. Praise God. We're just going to plant these seeds. Our scripture that we're going to go through is in Luke 12, verses 4 through 7. And we are going to break away later. We're going to be... In John 8, Luke 15, Acts 9. But Holy Spirit said, don't put that up there because he doesn't want it to be a distraction. Can I get an amen? amen? Right now, in the name of Jesus, listen. This is an opportunity for you to usher in the presence of God in your life. Amen. So don't approach God like, oh, it's just another Sunday morning. Rebuke that. There's some of you that I haven't seen in a while. Praise God. Welcome back. Hallelujah. Welcome home. Hallelujah. Give praise. Amen. Give God praise. Amen. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the only one that can bring people in. Amen. Take it from me. Take it from Pastor. All, all week. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Go visit people. Pray with them. Fellowship. Right? Come on. You've got to come to church. Come on. I can't make them, church. I can't make them. I know many of you are going like this because you feel where I'm coming from. Many of you are like this. But what I do encourage you to do is kill them with love, kindness. Kill them with this. Right? Because I want to tell you, as a child of God, as a beloved child of God, if you walk around crunchy, do you think people are going to walk what you got? I think you got cooties. That's the enemy, right? That's the enemy. But God is saying, you are saved, brother. brother you're never going to go to hell. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You're an eternal being, amen. You're the loving daughter of God. Look your daddy. Hallelujah. Look your daddy. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Don't let this world try to hold you down. And then don't let this world define you. And then don't let this world tell you what you're worth in, who you are. I am worthy because Lord Jesus Christ is worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Say with me, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to say amen? amen. Praise God. There'll be a miracle to get through this worship. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, please blow the trumpet. Amen. amen. Please blow it, Father God. Oh, I would love nothing more. Hallelujah. Than to just hear that trumpet go off and boom, right there in front of the Lord Jesus. Amen. And you know what? I can't wait to see agape. Father, Son, Holy Spirit just laughing. Amen. So I'm Brother Joey, you said, you said. Verse 4. Now we got to be reminded in this walk in Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus said this. We got to be reminded that when you start reading, read all of chapter 12 when you get a chance. But when you start reading chapter 12, the word of God says that thousands were following Lord Jesus Christ. And they were trampling over each other. Have you all ever been trampled on? Maybe on a Black Friday at Walmart? <laughs> huh? Right? Or maybe it's like a grand opening or something? Huh? Don't be trampled. Put a smile on your face, brother. We're about to stop worship service. Lay hands on you. Right? Have you ever been trampled on? That's the magnitude of how many people were there. And Lord Jesus was warning everybody, saying, watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees. What is the yeast of the Pharisees? It's self-righteousness, pride. Right? Being religious. Look what I can do. Having an outward appearance as a child of God, but inwardly being a wolf. Looking like a sheep, but inwardly being a wolf. And Lord Jesus Christ was rebuking them, saying, listen, listen, can you imagine? Can you imagine hanging out with Lord Jesus Christ? You all are disciples now. 
right? God lives in you and he speaks to you all throughout the day. If God is not talking to you, there is a problem, church. And I'm telling you right now, you need to come up front and let us pray over you. Amen? I'm telling you right now, if you're full of fear right now, God has nothing to do with that. It's the devil. And I'm encouraging you right now. God, he will eliminate that thing. He will get rid of it in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So I say all that to you because the Lord Jesus Christ is teaching his disciples and everybody, thousands of people. Listen. Watch out. Open your eyes. The reason why Pharisees, Sadducees, back in that day, they were considered holy, holy, holy men. But there's only one holy, holy, holy. Amen. Amen. And he was right there. He was right there talking. Amen. And he was telling them, be careful. Because the needs of the Pharisees, now what is needs? Have y'all ever known? Y'all ever known? Will you bless us? Amen. 
Amen. We need a veteran. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. When you hear Holy Spirit says, as you all sit down, amen, God has broken things off of your family. Whether there be generation and garbage that you've been fighting all this time, God right now just care of you. Maybe some of you are dealing with lack, God just delivered you. All right, so we're going to go into this and we're going to go fast. Amen? Amen, we're going to go fast. Amen? Are y'all excited to be here? Word 
and they're applying it to themselves, and they're making the word, the written word, an idol. And in this idolatry, they have become so religious and so holy that they have hardened their hearts towards me, and they have made it impossible for my children to have a relationship with me. And here is Lord Jesus Christ saying, I will show you. I will show you why you shouldn't fear. I will show you why the victory is yours. I will show you. And this is how God showed us. How, how much do you think Lord Jesus is worth to God? Forgive me for this 
put that out there. Amen? I mentioned earlier that we're going to break away from some scriptures, but really it's just to touch on some things that Holy Spirit wanted to bring across. In John 8, you have the story of the adulterer. And I just want you to show what two pennies look like. I know many of you said, well, Brother Joe, you just showed me this picture of two pennies. But I'm going to show you spiritually what two pennies look like. Amen? Amen. And you know, you see this lady, and you see those, those people, I believe that there's more than just manhandled her, beat her up, drug her. You know why? Because her worth was two pennies. And this is what happens when you try to find your identity in other things rather than the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen? Here's another one. You guys know this in Luke 15, right? This is the prodigal son in the pig pen, right? Pastor John preached this not too long ago, right? Don't, isn't that what two pennies look like? What, what's that? This is a great one. I thought we were going to preach on this today. The Holy Spirit said, no, I just want you to fix it. And this is the Apostle Paul. This is before he became Paul, Saul of Tarsus, right? And see, this is what two pennies look like, even though you look at Saul of Tarsus, and he had all what he thought was wisdom in being religious and carrying out the law, right? You see, the two pennies, as we discussed earlier, how many chickens can it buy? Five, right? My question to you is how much are you worth? Are you, are you worth the two pennies that this virus is running around rampant into the devil now? I'm going to call it out. They gave it a name. It's not a bad name. The name is Satan. Okay? Last time I checked, the way we rebuke Satan is only through the name above every name. What's his name? Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My question to you is, has the devil made you feel that this is your worth? Because if this is you right now, I pray in Jesus' name that we get right with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I know the Holy Spirit's going to do it in this worship service. Amen. Amen. How much are you worth? Amen. Praise God. Say with me. I'm worth a lot. I'm worth a lot. How many? Six chickens? How many? Huh? How many? See, there's many of these things. Many chickens. A lot of chickens. I heard Brother Charlie. I heard Brother Charlie. Brother Charlie said, all of them. Amen? And isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? But see, right now, notice. Right now, yes. You have your pastor standing up here. Preaching the word of God to you. Telling you what Lord Jesus Christ done said. Telling you and explaining to you what the environment was, was like as he was preaching the word of God and as he was teaching his disciples and anybody who had ears to hear, be careful. Don't let the devil in your heart. Because when you do, he will run rampant in your life. And then he says, I'm going to show you what you're worth. I'm going to show you. And I say with you, I'll show you. Last time I said to somebody, said, I'll show you. That's like,
See, you can continue the rest of your life living your life thinking, well, I'm worth five sparrows. That means you love sparrows. Or you can say, like Elder Charlie said, I am worth every, every sparrow, every chicken, every ocean chicken, every, every kind of chicken, even a human chicken that don't fly. Did you see?
Are you saved? Huh? Because when you say that you were saved by Lord Jesus Christ, He didn't just save you for eternity. He saved you for every situation in your life. Amen. Which means that if sickness or disease is knocking at your door or maybe in your house, through the blood of God, you have the authority in Christ to say, I rebuke you, Satan, no more. Amen? I rebuke you, Satan, no more. Listen, you, you, can be, you can be married 20 years, you can be married 50 years, 60 years, it don't matter. God right now is asking you, will you make a, a decision to refresh in yourself today? God wants to bless you with a brand new marriage. Listen, I don't know why I said that, but I know Holy Spirit said say it because there's some of you right now that are struggling here. I'm not even going to look at you. But there's some of you right now that you're just going through the motions, riding the wave. Oh, everything's good right now. We'll just ride it out, see how good it goes. Look, I'll cross my eyes so that you don't get a thing. <laughs> All right? Because it's hard looking at the ground. But if that's your, your, your marriage doesn't have to be like that. Your marriage is not worth these two cents. Your marriage is worth far much more. Amen? Amen. And the same thing applies to Saul. Amen? Say it with me. This Saul, this, this Saul of Tarsus, I'm going to tell you right now, that's exactly who I was. Even when I got born again. When I got born again and I received Lord Jesus Christ and God saved me and everything, guess what I did? I started studying the Bible, trying to obtain all kinds of degrees and everything else, right? Because that's what I thought that you're supposed to do. But little did I know that I went so far left that God gave me over to my prideful ways. And it almost led down to not only my death from suicide, but also destroyed our marriage. But by the grace of God, you know the Holy Spirit is always chasing you down. Amen. Always. Literally always. And all God is asking is, will you stop? You see, what I preach is what I live. Amen. I can't preach a story. God won't allow me to preach anything to you that I haven't personally lived. Amen. The same applies for you. So maybe there's some of you right now that's going through a season that you felt at one point. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, I'm saved. I need to tell everybody about the Lord Jesus. I can't wait to go to church. I can't wait to fellowship. And now you're just sitting here going, when is this over? I, I just can't wait. What are we going to eat today? Right now, see, praise God, there's some that are laughing because you're like, there's no way I can be like that. But there's some that are like, oh my God, you just called me out. And praise God, I want to tell you, God called you up because he's telling you, wake up. Hey, wake up. Say when you wake up. Hey, wake up. Good morning. Hallelujah. Last time I checked, when you say good morning, you just woke up. Amen. Good morning. Praise God. So there's two pennies. Quickly, what am I? How am I? Where am I? When am I? What does this look like? If you're, if you're taking notes down, this comes from Matthew 12. We're not going to go into the scripture. We're going to go through this in closing. Just want to show you coming from Mark 12, what it looks like to physically give everything that you have. The Word of God said everything that she had to live on. I love this picture. It's part of my screen saver at my house because I need to be reminded as far as what's my offering unto the Lord. Because see, everybody there is so comfortable in giving all, all this money, but guess what? It's because they're blessed with so, so much. Amen. But here is this beloved daughter of God, say with me, I am. I am. That had only these two pennies. And God himself looked through her and said, that's everything that she has to live with. But yet, but yet she found it in her heart. To give. I'm asking you, family of God, beloved children of God, listen, I'm not trying to touch your money. That's not the message here. I'm asking for your heart. 
your soul, your spirit, your mind, whatever's going on. I'm asking you, can you give this to God? Because right now, God can see right through you. He knows everything. Listen, you can fool me all day long, and guess what? I'm going to be as happy as can be about it. Amen. I don't care. You know what? Because my joy, my excitement, my identity doesn't come from you. Hallelujah. It doesn't come from you. It doesn't come from you. My identity, my, my very being, my core, comes from the Holy Spirit. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I love this where you can see Lord Jesus Christ watching with his disciples. See, I'm a firm believer, as you can see on this screen, your life, just like that glorious day you call the Lord Jesus to save you, you have to be eyeball to eyeball with Jesus. Amen? Eyeball to eyeball with Jesus. Because you know, this lady, she didn't see just a bucket. She didn't see just a place to deposit. What she saw was salvation. Hallelujah. And I'm asking you right now, when you look at Christ, when you come into this holy place, do you see a place just to be entertained and laugh at and hear a message? Or do you see, I need to go. Because my salvation, my salvation is purchased with such a high price. And I am accountable to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm accountable. Stay with me. I'm accountable. Listen, beloved church family, when I stand before Lord Jesus Christ, I am going to be accountable for everything that I have spoke at the highest level as a pastor. But don't think that you can sit there and tattletale on me. You're going to be accountable for your own deeds. You're going to be accountable in how you live this little bitty vapor of a life. You want to know what a vapor looks like? It right there. How many of you smoke? I'm not picking on you. Just lift your hand. God knows if you smoke, right? You ever, you ever blow the smoke and it's air and it goes away? That's a vapor. And God said, that's our life. A vapor. Why in the world are we trying to hold on to this vapor when God has life for us when we leave this place? Amen? Don't let fear control you, beloved church family. Amen? Once again, once again in this scripture, she gave all that she had. And you saw Lord Jesus Christ watching her. Say that with me, watching. Watch. Lord Jesus Christ watch. How many of you believe that God watches your offering? Amen. Amen. If you don't believe me, stare at the screen for me. Don't look at me. Stare at the screen for me. If you don't believe it, look at God's offering. Did God not give all that he had? Yes. Amen. Like I said, I ask for your prayers because this message has so much. And it's one of the very few messages right now when I left the house this morning. And in overflow, the Holy Spirit wants to tell this church, I said, Father God, other, other than you stopping time and you're working, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. And God said, don't worry about it. You just worship me and do what I say and speak what I say, and I will get through the whole service. And I will bless those who want the blessing. Do you want the blessing? Amen. Do you want the blessing of the Lord? Amen. So many of you saw the pictures. The funny thing is, is that as we started worship service today, some of you saw the pictures on the screen, and some of you were looking at me going, is this the right thing to come Why does it look like a junkyard? Right, Pastor? And this is what I wanted to share with you, because when you pull up the message on Facebook, this is the title that we titled it, American Pickers. And what I like about the show, American Pickers, is that you see things like this, and what Chris says to me all the time, it's one of my favorite shows, and praise God, it's one of the pastor's favorite shows. Trish always says, I want to give two cents to that. I hear her say it all the time, I will throw that away. She goes, don't you even think about it, I will throw it away. Every episode, don't you think about I'll throw that away, right? And this is where this is where the inspiration comes as far as for this word that Holy Spirit has for us. You see, you look at this junkyard and you just see a bunch of two pennies worth of merchandise. I wouldn't give two pennies for that. I found out that that saying is from back in the day when it cost uh, two cents to mail a postcard. I didn't know that. I just 
You ever have a friend that gives you like weird facts? Well, hello. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Absolutely nothing. It has nothing to do with anything. But I'm just letting you know that, you know, that's where I'll give you my two cents, right? Because that's how much it costs to send a postcard, right? All right, let's move on. Thank you, Lord. But this American picture, you go through all this and you see the two pennies, right? You see what's worth. You just see things that are worth it. But then, occasionally, you'll see in the show, they come across something. Uh, right? Look at the Harley guy, Harley guy's like salivating right now, right? And I love it because you know that those are worth more, right? Because it's in the eye of the beholder, right? They know what they're looking for and looking at, and they see, and they know the value of it, right? So of course, like with this Harley knucklehead Frank, just, 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 just as a story, it was picked for $10,000. They purchased it for 10 grand. Once again, friends should tell me I was going to give two cents for this. And honestly, my wife, I know she would chuck it. She would. Honey, you just threw away $10,000. Good, it's gone. Get it out of here. All right? But then look, it says not for sale. And this was truly one of the stuff on the episode of American Pictures, right? See, when I look out into a place like that, some of you all been blessed to go on vacation, hallelujah. I'm so thankful for that. Because you know why God has healed his land, amen? amen? Or maybe you go into the community, or maybe you're with friends and family. Wherever you're at, you can just see a bunch of people, right? The inspiration of this word from the Holy Spirit is, is that we are, say it with me, Christian thinkers, right? But see, the beauty of this is that when we see somebody, that they think that their worth is two pennies. We're the ones, through the light of God shining through us, to remind us, no, this is truly your worth. This is truly your worth. Amen? This is your worth. You may say that you've been an addict all your life. You may say that you, you've been addicted to whatever. But what I see is a worshiper. Amen. Well, how can you say that? All I do is do drugs all day long. You worship that thing, don't you? So all I'm asking you right now is receive Lord Jesus Christ and start worshiping him and watch what his presence will do. Amen. 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 You are worth, right? Maybe you see somebody that's way down in depression, anxiety. Maybe you're, you're confused on your identity. I have that a lot now these days, especially with the younger generation. Children of God, confused about their identity. You know what hasn't become real yet? You carry all that confusion. You carry all that torment, all that tur turmoil. You carry all these emotions. Remember this? Oh, I love this moment. Right? God is saying, put that down. Put that down. Lay everything down at my altar. Lay all your burdens down. And stay focused on what truly Christ did on that cross for you. Amen? Amen. You are? I am. Worth. Worth. Almost fell off the stage. Amen? Amen. One more. Two pennies. Maybe you've been struggling as far as with acceptance. Maybe you've been struggling as far as not being accepted. Maybe there's somebody right now that you think everybody's judging you. But see, the devil has deceived you because you stepped into it judging everybody else. You see, the devil is the author of lies, deception, and confusion. What God is asking you to do right now, will you lay it down at his altar? Remember, are you worth two cents? Or are you worth more? Oh. Amen? In closing, this is what I got. You know, family, 
I can't. But there just there's just so many times here, especially lately, I just cry out to God because I say I can't do it. And God reminds me, you can't, but I can. Amen. And so don't think for one minute that I don't know what you go through. I do. But what I'm asking of you is to be completely sold out on what Lord Jesus Christ did for you. The reason why is because he is the only one that can keep us on the straight and narrow. See, when we get caught up on what you can do for me, we're living in this day and age. You have no idea how many phone calls, how many text messages I get of people that you haven't even seen for months telling me you need to come and do this for me. You need to do this for me. And I'm like, why don't you just stop and do something for the Lord? Why don't you stop thinking of yourself and just come? Amen? And praise God, I know that I'm surrounded by worshipers of Lord Jesus Christ. That we're one. Amen? Amen? The Holy Spirit has given you the power to make a choice. These are those moments right now. And the reason why I break away from the service, I can feel it. Some of you right now are getting distracted in your mind. Some of you right now are just getting preoccupied. I want to ask you, this is between you and God, will you fight? How many, how many of you will fight for a blessing right now, or would you rather wait to get the hospital bed, and then go, oh Lord, I need a blessing. God is giving you time right now to fight for the blessing. Amen? 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 Fight for the blessing. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the praise and worship you to start making your way up front. I got a couple more things to say, but I'm going to have to praise and worship you to come up front. You see, beloved church family, I share this message just like with every message. The Holy Spirit says so. And I had a lot of fun doing it because it put one of my one of my favorite TV shows on, right? American Pickle. But then I realized now what God was saying is that as a Christian picker, guess what? God has given us the eye through Lord Jesus Christ. And that light from his eyes shines through us. That every family, every soul, every soul, every soul is priceless to Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? You see, I was a knucklehead. I was that knucklehead, right? But now I am in the Godhead. Amen? Say with me, I'm in the Godhead. Amen? So in closing, I know we went a little longer than we should. But praise God, it doesn't matter. It's all God. Amen. Amen. And I want to say thank you to all the parents that have their little ones. There's no place. Hallelujah. Praise God. You let them have fun. Let them run around. Amen. Praise God. If people get crazy about it, tell them come to all of Amen. Amen. Because, because let the little children run around and play. Amen. Let them. Amen. Praise God. But I'm going to have this in closing before this song kicks in. Holy Spirit said I just sit down here. I want you to know that as we look at this picture on the screen, this was me. And God gave me permission to share this real quick. And I pray you don't judge me, but if you do, that's between you and the Lord. Amen? But Joey Corrine at the age of 33 years old was abused, broken, hated, addicted, divorced, neglected, rejected, insecure, Liar, cheater, stealer, a criminal. I've done the most unimaginable things to people. I failed at everything in my life. I failed to the point that I tried to fight for it. And the only right thing that I've ever done is what Jesus told me. Amen. That is the only thing right that I've ever done my whole life. So if you see this picture and hear your brother telling you this is who I was, guess what? I was picked. Amen. I was picked by Lord Jesus, just like you were picked by Lord Jesus Christ. And it's because the blood of 
God purchased my life by it because of Amen. Hey. And I sent that picture, and many of you haven't seen this picture, but I love this picture. Hey. Hey. Because I said, look at what the Lord has done, Amen. It has hey. nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with me. But I'm just saying, the songs that the worship team sang, it's more than just the song. It is who Christ is. That if you on this glorious day, if you, I don't know where everybody's at, but if you on this glorious day would get uncomfortable with the Lord. Right? Get uncomfortable. Say it with me, snap out of it. Will you allow?